Hey, Dr. Wilson here. I'm a molecular and structural biologist, and I'm back to debunk some more COVID misinformation. It just never ends. This week, I'll be addressing the claim that the COVID-19 PCR test doesn't detect the SARS-CoV-2 virus at all. Instead, it detects DNA from human chromosome 8. The implication here, of course, is that the COVID-19 PCR tests are fake, and the cases are overblown, and a whole host of bad, dangerous things to believe going into the winter. This idea has been promoted by some very influential COVID deniers and anti-vaxxers, including Del Bigtree, Andrew Kaufman, and a bunch of random people like this person. It's this. What they are doing is calling our chromosome 8 primary assembly as the coronavirus. <laughs> we are the virus. Your own DNA, like I've been saying, like I've been teaching, here's the evidence that what they are pulling out of your body and calling a disease is your own DNA. And so naturally, this horrible, unscientific idea has already picked up a fair amount of followers. I've already gotten several questions about it, so let's explain exactly why it's wrong. Now, this bombshell story all comes down to this one table, which is on a fact sheet distributed by the WHO, and it describes a COVID-19 PCR test that was developed by scientists at the Pasteur Institute in France. This table lists the primers that are used in the PCR test. In PCR, primers are kind of like guided missiles that will direct themselves directly to a very specific set of genetic information and bind to it. Only if that primer binds to its target sequence of genetic material, an enzyme, in this case an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, will come and replicate that genetic material. COVID deniers will claim that one of the primers used in this test actually binds to human chromosome 8. Now, when we take the sequence of this primer and compare it to human DNA, we do get a match at human chromosome 8. This is probably a big reason why this idea has gained so much attention among COVID denying groups. However, it completely misses how this COVID-19 PCR works. It will not work if only one primer binds to its target. Here's why. In a normal PCR reaction, you have a forward and a reverse primer. Normally, the PCR will not work unless both of these primers bind to a specific sequence that you are trying to amplify. Many graduate students have learned this the hard way. So when we take the sequence of the other primer, the forward primer in this case, and compare that to human DNA, we don't get a significant match. Now, I know that using this tool, you can get what looks like a match, but what you have to pay attention to is this E value right here. This tells you the significance of the match. And when you look at the actual sequence that it's aligned to, you see that it doesn't really match well at all, which means that this primer is not good. It probably will not bind ever to this sequence in any significant way. But there's another big reason why this idea is totally wrong. It has to do with the fact that this COVID PCR is what we call a quantitative real-time PCR. In real-time PCR, the positive results are detected when a fluorescent signal comes out of the reaction. This fluorescent signal comes from a probe, or what is listed third on this table you see here. This probe is another DNA primer that binds in between the forward and reverse primer. It has molecules on it that will glow when they are cleaved off of the DNA. That cleavage only happens when the polymerase runs through it. So you can actually use free bioinformatics tools available to you online that I'll show you briefly how to use right here in order to confirm for yourself that the COVID-19 PCR test actually works to detect SARS-CoV-2. Now let's do a little simulation based on what I just told you using the sequences provided to us in this table. We can take each sequence individually and compare it to the SARS-CoV-2 genome to see where exactly they would bind. When we do that, we see that the forward primer binds starting just around base number 1260 in the SARS-CoV-2 genome. Meanwhile, the reverse primer binds just around base 12780. And finally, the probe, the one that needs to have the fluorescent molecules cleaved from it in order to detect a positive result, binds right in the middle of the forward and reverse primers. 
Now for the debunking part, if we were to do the same thing that we just did for the SARS-CoV-2 genome with the human genome, we'll see that maybe the reverse primer is going to bind to human chromosome 8, but the forward primer and the probe are not going to bind anywhere near that reverse primer. So that means you'll never get cleavage of the fluorescent molecules on the probe and they'll never fluoresce and give you a positive result. Pretty cool how you can see this for yourself at home, huh? The way this test is set up makes it extremely, extremely rare to have a situation where you get a false positive result based on a PCR test. These PCR techniques have been around for a long time and they're used very commonly in all sorts of applications, including diagnostics which is why anybody who has studied molecular biology at any level should be well aware of this. And to all the medical doctors and the PhD scientists who have been spreading this kind of misinformation about the COVID test, you should be absolutely ashamed of yourselves. Winter is coming, and that means that this virus is going to have an easier time spreading around. And we're already seeing huge rises in cases worldwide. We have already sacrificed so much trying to fight this virus. Lives, health, work hours, jobs, priceless life moments, all of those are being lost. And the last thing we need right now are bogus, unscientific ideas that deny the reality that we live in. And with that, I think I'll close this week's debunking. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And whether you're a COVID denier, someone who is trying to fight COVID misinformation, or you're just interested in the topic, I do hope you're learning from these videos. I'll keep putting out these videos for as long as I can, so make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss one. And I do hope you'll join me next Tuesday, where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.